And as I say, it's time to talk mushrooms again uh, because uh, that massive saga going on down under in Australia uh, where a woman called uh, Erin Patterson, basically, let's not be about the bush, uh, stands accused of uh, serving a deadly meal to four guests, three of whom have died, another is fighting for her life. She denies that she deliberately fed them death cat mushrooms, uh, the uh, most dangerous mushrooms on the face of the planet. There are others. I wonder what dangerous ones uh, might be here in Britain, and I wonder how... Uh, mushrooms actually do kill people. What is it that they do that results in the death of uh, the people who unwittingly consume them? Uh, so, uh, extraordinarily, we've got a mushroom expert, a forager and author of The Wilderness Cure, Monica Wild. Uh, good morning, Monica. Good morning. Uh, well, first of all, uh, death cap mushrooms uh, they are the most poisonous in the world do you, do we get them here in, in Britain uh, if not or what other mushrooms are there we should be frightened of back here in the little old UK yes no we certainly do get them in the UK and every couple of years there is somebody in the UK who will pick one and come to an unfortunate end so you do have to look out for them here OK, and what other mushrooms should we be careful of uh, around uh, Britain? Well, there's quite a, there's, there's a few. I mean, given that there's about 8,000 mushrooms in the UK, it's actually quite a small proportion. But you've got other ones like the funeral bells, which, you know, the clues in the name, um, the destroying angel, the deadly web cap... Um, yeah, we, 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 gave, we give them the right names, don't we? <laughs> is, there, is there any particular way uh, for the layman, and this is the danger with mushrooms, isn't it? People say, well, that's pretty, I'll make that into a meal. Is there a way uh, that the layman can spot or deduce whether or not a mushroom is poison? No. No, and that's none encouraging. Of the... <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, and none of the old wives' tales work either. About you know, if you hold a silver spoon to it, it'll tarnish if it's poisonous. You know, none of those work. You know, each some of the mushrooms can look really innocent and innocuous, and you have to be really, really, really careful with them. There are no, there are no easy rules about how to identify it or not. Yeah, in other words, you've got to be like you. You've got to know what you're talking about. So uh, I guess the message to anyone foraging for mushrooms is don't, for God's sake, eat them. Uh, if you're in any doubt, uh, you know, show them to an expert. If you're in any doubt, I would suggest just chuck them away until you find some that you know. I used to go mushroom with my dad when I was a kid. So uh, we used to just stick to the white ones with the sort of slightly light brown uh, slats underneath so uh, I think that's a safe way forward uh, but uh, what it, so the, the, I don't know if you this um, is something that you know about but uh, how do poisonous mushrooms uh, a make you ill B kill you we're hearing it's to do with uh, the poison proliferates in your kidneys and your liver how does it happen well, different mushrooms can kill you in different ways. You know, there's quite a wide range of poisons. But in the death cap in particular, what it does is it kills your liver cells and um, then goes into the kidneys. And, you know, what's really fatal about it is that it recirculates over and over again. So, you know, even if somebody eats a small amount and gets sick but then gets better again, they should still take it really seriously because... You know, they might get better for a day or two, and then as the poison recirculates and goes back to the liver, um, then it'll, you know, then it'll certainly wipe them off at that stage. Uh, and uh, it's not a good range of antidotes either. No, no exactly. Uh, apparently, it's a sort of inexorable process uh, that doesn't actually happen instantly. It just uh, unfolds over days of agony. So it's a pretty yeah. bad way to die. And uh, our sympathy, of course, to those three victims of that lunch, uh, which Miss Patterson uh, denies uh, that she is responsible for. Uh, if it was mushrooms, she said it was a mistake. Uh, a lot of suspicion about that woman, though. Um, before you go, we've been very negative so far, Monica. Uh, what's your... Fa I mean, you know, we know about the normal mushroom, but what, what's your favourite unusual mushroom to eat? Oh, that's like asking who's your favourite child. It's almost impossible. <laughs> I mean, during, during the year I, I ate only wild food, I ate 87 different species. 
Wow. But I suppose if I had to pick one right now, it would be um, Hen of the Woods. Hen of the Woods. Uh, yeah. And what, it, what does that look like? Um, it actually looks like a very ruffled, feathered hen sitting at the bottom of normally an oak tree. Okay. But right now we've got um, porcini and chanterelles and ruby bolites, all sorts of things coming out. So the mushroom season's really kicking off at the moment. And t t just before you go, well, hen of the woods. So what? So why is that your favourite? <laughs> is it particularly delicious? It's particularly delicious. In Japanese, it's called maitake, which means dancing butterflies, but it's it's particularly delicious, yes. Hen of the Woods, right. So don't go out looking for Hen of the Woods unless you know what you're talking about, everybody, including me, but it sounds delicious. Great to talk to you, Monica. Thank you so much. Uh, Monica Wilde there, forager and author of The Wilderness Cure. She, she said she spent a year just living off the land, as it were.